Hello everyone. Today we'll be seeing the second topic of the first unit that is time complexity and space complexity. So first of all let us understand what is the complexity of an algorithm. The amount of resources required by an algorithm to solve a problem is called as the complexity of the algorithm. And this complexity is measured in, type, in terms of two resources. One is time and another is space. So whenever we write any algorithm or any program to solve a problem, amount of space required by the program and amount of the time required by the pro program is the complexity of the program. Now, let us understand the time complexity of the sorting algorithm. If you see on the right, there is an image where there is a graph. On the x-axis, we have got the input and on the y-axis, we have got a time. Now, how would we calculate the time complexity of an algorithm? We will plot the size of the input and the time taken to solve the problem with that input. And that will give us the time complexity of that particular algorithm. Suppose we need to sort some data. Sorting means what? Arranging in some order. Suppose I want to sort 10 numbers. So how much time will be required to sort 10 numbers? So what is the 10? The input size. So the time required to sort of size 10, that will be plotted. That will give me the time complexity. Same way if the size increases to 20, how much time it will require? If the size increases to 30, what is the time required? That is what will give us the time complexity. So what, how do we define the time complexity? The time complexity of an algorithm quantifies the amount of time taken by an algorithm to run as a function of the length of the input. So the time complexity will be calculated in terms of the size of the input. And to calculate the time complexity, we need to determine two things. What is the cost of the instruction? and how many times that instruction is going to be executed. Right? So how to calculate the time complexity? If you write a program, if you write a program, whichever instructions are there and how many times they are going to be executed, you need to count them and that will give you the time complexity. Okay, so time complexity is not the actual amount of CPU time required to solve a problem, but it is the amount of instructions that you write to, to solve the problem. It is going to count the number of instructions you write to solve the problem. Okay, now let us understand the space complexity. If you see the diagram on the right hand side, we see array. We see an array over here. What is array? Array is a continuous set of memory locations of the same type. Right? So we have stored how many elements over here? Whatever is stored inside the array is called as an element. So how many elements have we stored over here? One, two, three, four, and five elements we have stored over here, right? So to store these five elements, okay, to store these five elements, different programming languages would require different amount of storage, different amount of space. What are we discussing over here? The space complexity. And what is the space complexity? The amount of space required to store the data is the space complexity. Fine. So if we take a C programming language, in a C programming language, one integer takes two bytes. How many integers have we stored in this? We have stored five integers. So five integers will take 10 bytes. But we, if we speak about a Java programming language, one integer takes four bytes. So how many bytes would be required? How much storage space would be required for this? It will be five into four, 20 bytes. So if it's a C programming language, 10 bytes. If it is a Java programming language, 20 bytes. So what is the space complexity? Is the space complexity of algorithm is the amount of space required by an algorithm in terms of the input size. Here the input size is five. And space complexity depends on the programming language, the compiler, and even the machine running the algorithm. So this is about the space complexity. Now, previously, there was not much space or there was not an abundance of space. So this complexity was important. But now, nowadays, a lot of space is available. Okay, the storage space capacities are increasing day by day. And it is also becoming cheap to buy any storage space. 
right so space complexity is not that important nowadays but how much time is required to solve a problem that is of utmost importance so time complexity is more important than space complexity in today's world now in order to measure the time complexity and space complexity asymptotic notations are used what is an asymptotic notation it's a notation or it is a method to describe the time and space complexity of an algorithm with respect to what the input size right so there are mainly three notations big o notation omega notation and theta notation now let us understand what are these notations and when are they used let us see the big o notation okay what does it do it gives the maximum amount of time or space required to solve a problem okay so in case you have written a sorting algorithm sorting algorithm means arranging in some order arranging the data in some order so big o notation will give what is the maximum time an algorithm will require to solve a particular problem omega will give the shortest or minimum time required to solve the problem and theta will give the average time required to solve the problem right now you remember these three things now how it is used let us see in the next slide so what are you going to remember big o notation gives the maximum time omega notation gives the minimum time and theta notation gives the average time let us understand what is the meaning of this fine so what are you going to understand best average and worst case time complexity let us see over here right what are we observing over here on the right hand side we have got an array what is array a continuous set of memory locations of the same type how many elements are there in the array five and what we need to do arrange in order which order ascending order ascending order goes from what the lowest to the highest now if we see this data which is there over here if we see this data find over here the data this is already in a ascending order right 1 2 3 4 5 it's already in the sorted order so the amount of time required by the algorithm to sort this data is very minimum okay it does not require a lot of time at all because it's already in the sorted order so this is called as a best case and which notation gives the best case omega notation gives the best case which gives the best case the omega notation gives the best case okay now let us see the second array now here we observe that these two numbers 3 and 2 they are not in sorted order they need to ex be exchanged and 5 and 4 these need to be exchanged in order to get the so sorted output right so some amount of work is required to be done by the algorithm to get this sorted array fine so this is which case average case now let us see the last case over here i want the data in ascending order and the data exactly over here is in the descending order so a lot of work needs to be done by the algorithm to put this in the sorted order right so which what case is this the worst case so big which notation gives the worst case big o notation gives the worst case time complexity right so that is all so let us then meet in the next video do not forget to like and subscribe thank you thank you